yeah, so let's, let's talk about, uh, uh, I guess we should get, we should start with a little background on yeah. what Wak Hollywood is and how you got involved. <laughs> yeah, it, um, the stuff is, this is going to become legendary, and I always did, um, except I think now it's, now, now people are kind of catching on slowly but surely, so this is just so ridiculous a thing, I just, it just takes time uh, to process it, but so there's this village in Uganda called Wakaliga. And in it, uh, this guy, Nabwana IGG, born and raised there, uh, he's been making action films. Geez, now it's, a, it's, a, it's about 15, at least maybe 15 and a half years. Um, and we don't know how many he's made because he, he himself forgets. Um, we think it's close to 50 at this point. And, mm. and these are feature length films. And, um, but it's a slum. But they've been making these films somehow um, for about 15 years. And, and the catch of it is that they're freaking great. But again, it's a slum. So it's like the guns are made out of scrap metal, the computers you build out of spare parts. Uh, for a long time, they were using real blood because they thought that's what Hollywood did oh and, and looked cool. <laughs> um, yeah, no, people have been hospitalized wow. for this because, you know, they're doing fist fights like uh, Kung Fu. And so they get like a mouthful of really rotten cow's blood. Oh. And you know you swallow it sometimes, oh. and like they and actors would disappear. Like one of our main guys, I think he's died the most out of everyone, and almost literally this time. But like he, you, know, you swallow a little bit, and he got Priscilla. I think it's yeah. called. They get this. He got blood poisoning from it, and like when they when they, he didn't show up, they know it's a problem because these people live for the acting. You know, they live for the kung fu, and uh, they found him like in his bed. He was just really kind of unconscious, but like shaking. So they brought him to the hospital. They tied him to the bed and. We survived, but after that, Isaac's like, maybe, maybe food coloring is a good idea, you know, maybe we try something like that. But anyway, this, but this is like, you know, the level it is, meaning the uh, the kind of passion, you know, with just basic stuff that they're so easy to take for granted, like freaking electricity. So, um, so we've been making these, and then little clips would come out. So around 2009, 2010. Um, they uploaded the trailer for Who Killed Captain Alex, Uganda's first action movie. And it got millions of views. And this was back then. Uh, but it was only, you know, like 90 seconds. And so for me, I mean, my, my background is, you know, as a festival director, program director for a number of years, and I worked in production forever, uh, whether it's like sound recording or sound mixing, but then editing or cinematography. I shot a couple features and shit. So I know production. Um, and also, you know, exhibition a bit, like audiences. And uh, I saw 90 seconds, I saw that trailer in a bar on St. Mark's Place in New York, and my friends were laughing, and I wasn't laughing. I was like, what the hell is this? Um, and that's it. I mean, that night I tried to Google them. There's no information except everyone's saying, this is freaking awesome. But no one knew anything. No one knew if it was like, are these real movies? Maybe this is Saturday Night Live Nigeria, you know? Or, or maybe the right. films were never finished. But I'm looking at it, and I'm studying it, and I'm like, I think it's legit. Like it's, I think it's legit. Um, and so that night I bought a plane ticket to uh, to Africa. I think I got like the world's most expensive movie ticket and it was for a freaking DVD. Not even for a DVD. <laughs> you know, and like, but that was it. And and I knew I'd find them because the films are big. I mean, it's, you know, it's explosions and helicopters and Kung Fu and commandos and like a cast of a hundred and all this. So I knew, I knew I'd find them and I found them that very first afternoon. That's it. And we talked for, I don't know, six, seven hours. And, and we talked about everything. Like, because I think I was the first Western, the first American you ever met. But also, I, now I'm not a filmmaker directly. Other, it's filmmaking that I'm around, you know. I, I wouldn't say I'm a filmmaker exactly. But I was the closest he's ever met, you know. And so I'm asking all the right questions. Like, what is the software? How do you market the things? Right. How did you build the computers? Where do you get the sound effects? You know, like, like everything like that. And he was, just, he was so excited. I was very excited. And... That's it. Like so, that night, I couldn't sleep. I mean, at that point, I was up for like 48 hours because it was really like the airplane and the ride. I, I didn't sleep. I just I found them very quickly, but I couldn't sleep. So I called them at like 2 a.m. At that time, I had a little money saved, so I had a decent hotel. And I um, I said, look, I want I want to I want to do this. Like I want to help get these films out there. Um, so I want to work with you, but I think I also want to act. You know, but you're like I'm not an actor. You know, but it's something like you, you go around these guys and you just want to do it. You know, you want to blow shit up. You want to play around. It's like joining the circus, you know. And he got very quiet and he said, okay, let me think about it. And I thought that meant maybe yes, maybe no. 
uh, what that meant was, is uh, let me write a movie for you. And, uh, and that's Bad Black, and that's what's coming to, uh, <laughs> to finish, up, to finish up Proctor's and Schenectady after uh, we killed that, that Captain Alex from awesome. a couple of years ago. Well, we're, we're excited to have you back. Um, is, yeah, Tiger Mafia is asking about you, man. That, <laughs> you know, they're, they're coming, dude. I'm serious. At, at one point, it's you over. At, at one point you said that uh, it was that you're working with MoMA now, and there was a possibility that Isaac and uh, VJ Emmy might be coming over. Is that yeah. still a possibility, or is that? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, MoMA MoMA's a big fan. You know, they're a big fan with this, and so uh, the tour opens with them. On, on May 13th, uh, it begins at the part of the Museum of Modern Art, and then, and then we blow up everything else. It's uphill from there. And um, yeah, and so the next mission, look, I can talk a good game, meaning I live there, I know them, and I could, I could talk about this, but it's a very different thing to hear it from them. Yes. You know, like their own story, why they do this, what do they love from them, and so that's now really the mission, is how to get these guys here, and so we're gonna try, with MoMA's help and a few others, uh, to definitely get both uh, Isaac, you know, the founder and director of Will Hollywood, uh, but also VJ Emmy, so uh, so we can do it live, the whole live VJ, the full experience. Tell us a bit and, about VJ Emmy. What is what is what is uh, that? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> yeah, so, I don't tell you. There's so many parts to this thing. It's it's this perfect. Uh, it's, well, it's a storm. I don't know. It, it's okay. So there's something called a VJ. And that's a, a video joker. And so he's like an online, you know, he's like a live narrator slash cheerleader slash practical joker. Like he's making fun of the film as he's loving it, you know. It's this really bizarre thing between, I guess, a cheerleader and mystery science theater or something. Um, and it's loved. And so this VJ thing is very, it's Ugandan, meaning it's not Kenya, it's not Nigeria, it's a very Ugandan thing. So with the VJ, um, as far as I can tell, when I, when I interview everyone, is that it started in the, in the early 80s. Because in the, before that, you have the Idi Amin period, and then it was a Civil War period. So um, families were just moving everywhere to avoid the violence, right? So in the early 80s, Uganda starts to settle. People start coming back into Kampala, the capital. And that was the first time in easily a generation, if not more, where Uganda was very open uh, to the West, or open, open to like the world. And they went freaking bonkers for uh, all these American action films, and it, it's it's no wonder. I mean, you know, the films are freaking awesome, for one, you know. And also, you know, when you watch like Terminator, like you don't you don't need subtitles. Like you know, you, you get it. You know what the heck's happening. Like you don't need subtitles to understand, you know, Predator and all that. Uh, but at the same time, you are curious, like what Schwarzenegger is saying. And so that was the problem then. So what do you do? I mean, like you're in this village, it's 1983, it's barely electricity or anything. Like how, and you, if you have a generator, okay, you can run the movie, but then how do you subtitle it? And then the problem with that is like, how technically do you subtitle it? But then also what dialect is it gonna be? Oh, because it's like, it's like 53 mm. languages in yeah. Uganda alone. And then the other thing is there's a big problem with literacy anyway, right. because again, this is right after that Civil War period where it's like schools, <laughs> schools were out, okay? Yeah. Like no one's, it's just, it's, you know, people are fighting for their lives. So someone had the bright idea, it's like, okay, what if I get a microphone and I stand like right in front of the screen and I explain to the audience exactly what's happening, you know? Huh. Like this is what Schwarzenegger okay. is saying and all this stuff. And it was great, but the catch was they didn't know either. So they just made <laughs> <laughs> right. and, and, But then it took off, you know, because people knew he was making it up, but it was really, really funny. So it exploded. So now, that's like 30 years ago. So there's like there's over a generation of VJs. There's, there's VJs who were like in their 60s. Now there's teenagers, of course, but you grow up with it. And it's very, because in Uganda, you know, it's very upper class, lower class. It's like there's no middle really, and so the VJ is considered. It's considered lower. It's considered ghetto because it's not proper, right? I mean, you're. It's not the director's vision and all this stuff. So, and so it's Alan, like maybe, maybe not, but it's pretty freaking funny. So, Alan, you know? can I can I ask you? Yeah. What, can I ask you a question? Um, yes. So when the so when when they make their films, um, do they keep that in mind that someone is going to kind of interpret this, or do they just kind of make the film without that? Uh, yeah, see, it's it's an interesting, it's a very interesting thing, because, so I'll talk about us, 
and about Isaac, because Isaac's pretty unique. I mean, like a typical filmmaker, especially upper class, is thinking, no, no VJ, I'm not thinking that at all. But Isaac does. And he makes it, it's like a symbiotic relationship. Mm. Yeah. Because like Isaac, what he's doing, it's actually, and again, I sound crazy, just ask my dad. But it's like, <laughs> what he's doing is, it's film criticism in a way, what Isaac's doing. Because um, when he watches like a Rambo film or all this, yeah, he likes the action, but there's too much talking. And like, people get in, like they get into a car, they find their keys, they turn on, and he's like, I know they get in the car. Why do I have to see this? Right. Just cut to the action. Like, I know he walks right. into right. a building. Why am I seeing that? Like, we see it in the West because, you know, it's a 90 minute movie. You got to pad it, you know? But he gets frustrated with that. So he's like, you cut all that out. We don't need it. But that's where the VJ comes in. Because Isaac knows oh, I can just punch right to the action, and the VJ is going to step up. And no one will ever be lost because it'll be like, the VJ will say simple things like, back to mafia. Or, you remember him. He wants, you know, he kidnapped the daughter. Simple things that you may think on one hand. Well, he's just making up for a lack of storytelling ability, but that's not what's happening. Isaac is Isaac is not wasting any time uh, in these movies. He's getting you right to like the most important stuff. Right. Thinking of the VJ, but also he sets up jokes for the VJ. And so when I first right, right. That's cool. was working with him, and I had to strip it down, uh, I was at to fix the audio and such. And so when you remove the VJ track, the scenes uh, when you look at them visually, um, they're kind of long. Like I was I was worried, and I told him like. You know, the action of the scene kind of ends here, but you kept it another 10 seconds. And Isaac is like, oh yeah, but you see why? Because in the background, that guy made a funny face, you see? And so he kept it in there knowing that the VJ will make a joke. So when you have the VJ, it's like, there's no dead time because he fills it in with some comedy or some observations. Right. But when you remove it, you, you notice that. So Isaac's like, yeah, do whatever, you know, blah, blah, it's about entertainment. So, but Alan, do it's, they... It's very much a symbiotic relationship, yeah. Do they VJ to Western films as well? Like, the, uh, oh, like do they dude. do The Favorite? Oh, dude. Because <laughs> I'd oh, like to see dude. that. I, I'm it's signing like, up. It's, it's incredible. I mean, I, actually, I can think some of stuff. I can even show, like, a scene or something of uh, watching, like, like, Rambo or something with them. I mean, they, without a doubt, dude, they go freaking nuts. Mm. And, and the way the VJ works, too, that is, like, there's... Fun. You know, there are, there are superstars of VJs, and there's some that have specialties. Like our guy, VJ Emmy, you know, he's, he's action and he's horror, you know? But other people are good more like even on soap operas or love stories oh. or, or different things like that. Um, but those have different kind of audience. Like people, you know, they want, oh, he was in love with her forever. He dreamed of her last night, like all this fucking poetry shit like that. You know, there's other people who, who, who are good at that. And I had their audience. I'm wondering if that but, would be um, something they could do to they they could we could do make an event where we play the Terminator and have them kind oh, of come yeah. in and, and do commentary it's, track over Uganda it. night. <laughs> that would it, be fun. That's that's something that's that, I tell you the truth. With uh, it would work. It would definitely work. We started to work on Commando, and like the very first <laughs> yeah, line. Yeah, right. like, do you remember yeah. in Commando the beginning? is Schwarzenegger with a giant log that that whole tree that he puts on his shoulder and is walking with a bare chest, remember that? And so like, I'm working with Emmy, um, and Emmy's first thing is like, Schwarzenegger, world's greatest African. More African than Africa, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's, like it's just nuts. Now, em like, Emmy has you know, this, but, the signature yeah. high-pitched voice. Do, yeah. are they all recognizable like that? Do they yeah, each yeah, have their yeah, own yeah. like range? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, they they have their stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, but Emmy's carved out. <laughs> he's carved out his own his own chunk of. Uh, and and he does it, Does he do it live? Yeah. Like when they when they yeah. do screenings, or is it kind of like is it like kind of in the movie? Kind of like how we no, see. No, no, no. It. It's he's the only one. Like there are hundreds of VJs, really. Um, and I and he broke out. Like he's the first one of us that really broke out within Uganda. Because understand, like Isaac and the guys, they're not they're loved in the ghettos, but like in the upper stuff, mm. it's there's a lot of resentment. Mm. And you know, I could talk about that a little bit. But Emmy broke out really early with, with us. Once Alex kicked in, he's he's frick he's famous, dude, in mm. Uganda. But um I'm sorry, but but for him, he's the only one. He talks about this and, and I ask around and it seems he's right, that does it live. Like Emmy needs an audience, like because he's a performer. You know, and, and he just, you know, what I do with him because he has a hard time, I, I mean, he thinks so quickly and he's so smart like with that, but English trips him up, you know, because mm. he can't think in English. Now he's very, he's much better now at speaking in this, but when he's on point, it, it kind of trips him up a bit. So that's when I work together and, you know, ask me, how, like, like Alan, is it okay to say, 
you know, super deadly kicks in. I'm like, yes, Emmy. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> you know, expect the unexpectable. Does that make sense? Yes. I just try to put <laughs> kerosene on his bonfire, you know? But but Emmy, no, Emmy Emmy is live. Like he he's not he's bored with it if it's not, but he really he really loves it live. Everyone else kinda of does it in a closet, you know, with some proper sound and a microphone and just watch the films. But I, I've seen stuff you know, and I have video of all this stuff, but I remember one time it was pouring rain, so there's no electricity, but we have the, the generator. So he's doing a live show with a steel roof. So you can imagine the sound from that, right? Oh, yeah. He's pouring rain on the steel roof. With the volume on the thing is on 11. This has got, he uses the speakers that are like half the size of a person. They're like four feet tall, massive speakers, like, like Peter Frampton kind of crap. Um, and with like 150 people in this tiny space that you could seat 30. Everyone's standing like pencil thin, jumping up and down in unison to Emmy doing "Who Killed Captain Alex," like in DJ, like so, and he's, whatever the frick he's saying at that time. I, I was learning Luganda at that time, so I can't. But it was like Uganda's here, Uganda's blowing up. This is the best movie ever. People were just going batshit crazy, jumping up and all and down in the pouring rain. The rain's coming indoors. The generator, the sound of the generator under all of that, and I'm sitting there with my little Uncle Bernie's camcorder alone, going. You know, I think this is going to work. <laughs> you know, I think I think there may be an audience for this. Wow. Um, do you speak it's, Ugandan, it's, it's Alan? Do you do you, do you speak Ugandan at this point? Yeah, more more or less. Yeah. So for us, it's the so Uganda's the country, and then for us, our region around Kampala, that's uh, that's the Bugandan uh, okay. kingdom. So the tribe is Buganda. Okay. The people are 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 Muganda. The language is Luganda. Um, so I am, yeah, I am Muzungu Muganda. Um, so more or less, yeah. If they okay. don't, if they don't want to screw with me, because what it, the thing with the language is, and I think this is true with a lot of these that are not, it's not, it's more of an oral language than written down. Right. Although it is, but it's more of an oral. Right, that right. the language changes fast, man. Hmm. And and it, there's so much slang, and they can just trip you up if they want to have fun, like playing games around you with the language. It's like what the hell. And what's really interesting is that. They trade words, and so if you have some guy, say from the villages, who maybe in Kampala for a bit, and I've seen this, like they would, maybe someone, a fan of Isaac, say something like that, would come by. Like they all say hello, it's all very polite and such, and like the first thing they talk about is language, and and they exchange words, and like I, I think they ask him, like outright, like, so do you know any good slang words for for this or for that for this? And you see them laughing, and they're and trading back and forth. And so that's actually a lot that Emmy does. Like Emmy would actually like create uh, words and slang in Luganda, and those become his punchlines. Mm. And and there's there are VJs out there who will not VJ a film until Emmy does, because once Emmy oh, does, wow. like they use that as the, as the main. That's like the baseline for the wow. jokes for everyone else, huh. especially for slang. Yeah, and so that's what and Emmy wants to do that in English. That's why he's like pushing it, like expect the unexpectables and all this stuff. He's like, let's let's. Let's see what we can create in that language. Yeah, so that was um, the cell phone died, and That's I was okay. lightly <laughs> asked to leave the lobby of CVS. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I'm in the hall, the, the stairwell. That's next to my parents' apartment, uh, hoping that that's where I'm trying to steal the Wi-Fi connection. Um, <laughs> and I'm off my laptop now. So. I had a question. Uh, how has this filmmaking impacted the community there? Uh, now, yeah, in, in terms of wealth, in terms of what it's brought to it? Um, it's brought a lot, of, a lot of confusion and a lot <laughs> of question marks. Because, so with, with Bad Black and the tour, that's the first time we're actually really monetized. Okay. Um, because we had to uh, look. In, in the beginning, I thought this was going to be easy. Look, for me, it's eight years. It's eight years. Wow. And I thought it was going to be very easy in the beginning because it, to me, it seems obvious. I mean, it's it's action comedies. They're cool. It's fun. But what happened was, uh, especially 2011, 2012, around there, everyone thought. Um, that again, I was crazy, but they, they thought that I was glorifying violence in Africa. Mm. They looked at this as like, you know, you have Africans with guns killing each other. And I'm like, yeah, but, but they're cartoons. It's like a, it's like a Bugs Bunny, but it's like a Roadrunner cartoon, really. 
it's you know this this isn't it's it's a it's just comedies and why can't they make comedies and and Isaac was furious because you know he's like why can't I make an action movie like where's this list of countries not allowed to make action films and mm. and who wrote that list and all this so in 2015 so we decided the plan was like let's make one the first one for free uh, thinking that we have like you know like, like we have crack cocaine or something like what, once people try it they'll love it and they're hooked. Um, so we did it for free, Captain Alex, and uh, just because we knew that then you couldn't ignore us. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like, like in other words, like if it's free, mm-hmm. there's no reason not to try it, and and it worked. And and so yeah, we just sell like the DVDs that he makes. You know, and he signs them from the village and some T-shirts and all that. And that's enough to put, say, the kids. That's the basics. That puts like the kids in school. But the school's not free, man. It's that. That's the most expensive thing for any of them. So, and my mission was like, I just want to get everyone to be able to focus on the work, you know. And no one can focus if they're worried about the kids, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so we have a Patreon, and and uh, with those DVDs, that's enough. That's the baseline. So, the life hasn't changed, like as far as like the day to day. Although, yeah, they're eating better, and it's it's all good. We have electricity, like we can pay it, you know, all this very easily. But the fame thing is because it's not like the same with the guys. It's not like they have computers, you know. It's not like they're online and, and all this. And so, you know, we can have, you know, like like BBC or something or Vice or Playboy comes. They have, they don't. It doesn't. It's they love and they see how what they are doing is being loved by all different kinds of people all around the world. You know, it could be like Korean television, something in India, some Paris, and then like Schenectady. And the idea that that they are loved like that is really hard for them to wrap their heads around. And it's it's a beautiful thing and it's a kind of a sad thing. Mm. You know. So but now with, with the tour, this is the first time well we're, we're gonna see what we have. Um, and then we'll see. <laughs> like if all goes well, you know, everyone will buy Hawaiian shirts and move to, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> the Caribbean, screw movies, all this stuff. Um, <laughs> Who knows? And you know, and, and you know, and also part of this is, um, you know, a lot of people would come and they would say, you know, Alan, do you think that if this gets really successful, say, uh, will that change things? Will that spoil things? You know, and and I and I understand that, but like, you know, but my point of view is with Isaac's is like is like good, meaning like this just treat this as if it's treated from everything else, but. Like the dream is, like talks about is like well, like he he, ima- he he wonders what kind of film he could make if he could focus on one film for two years, mm-hmm. you know, and and that and that's true, you know, if we can really organize and everyone's happy and paid and all this, you know, where the kung fu guys can practice three months on just one sequence, right. you know. So you're what are you working on now? We I saw a little bit of footage the other day. Um, can you talk about that? <laughs> that's one look. He's got a bunch, and I have I, I left. I've been here maybe two months uh, in the West. So the answer on one hand is like God only freaking knows. On on on, on the paper, it's uh, Eaten Alive in Uganda, which is the cannibal film. Uh, that's one also with me where the cannibals think I'm Chuck Norris, so I must be delicious. That's pretty much the whole plot. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's you know it's and it, it's 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 as awesome as it sounds. But yeah, he's. There's something with this 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 coffee plantation bad guys or whatever. There's 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 a lot. And the thing with Isaac is that he's very much uh, a man of passion. And if he wakes up and he gets an idea for something completely new, you know that's where we're going a thousand percent. Or the opposite. I don't feel it today. Like I'm an artiste. If I don't feel it today, we don't work. it's like okay. Well, what about this this kid kung fu film? <laughs> Jesus Christ. So the kid, the, it, you know, it's. The child kung fu film Crazy World, it's it's not it's brilliant and it's also sad, you know. So that that's the next film that's coming out and it's it's finished. I'm just working a little bit with Emmy. And we're hoping for the for September, for the fall. So we have like the bad black and a tour and then then we hit the left hook with the child kung fu film. And so but but I say sad because you know, they started working on that one in two thousand fifteen. And so that was right uh, right before Captain Alex was public, like in the, in the West and things, and I sat down with Isaac. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. I sat down with Isaac before because we did a Kickstarter at that time for um, 
we asked for like $160 and got about $13,000. And, and that was before anything, before any of this, you know. But I sat him down and I said, look, you know, this Kickstarter thing, uh, we don't have to do it. Meaning, I think that we can raise money you know, privately. We can do it like that. Because, you know, Isaac, with the Kickstarter, is that it's public, right? Essentially, I mean, like, in theory, someone in the village can go online and they could think maybe you have $10,000 under your bed. Oh. Like, do you want people to know that? Because we can do it privately. And he was like, no, we have to be public. People need to see that we are here and that we are supported and we're loved around the world. We have to do it public. But at the same time, that's a legit question because this is a lot of this is blue sky. Like, you know, they could be someone who breaks out, you know, in popularity from the third world. But I don't think there's many cases where, like, from from the ghettos of the third world like this. Mm. And we don't we don't know we don't know what it means. And so Isaac got the actors together, the ones who had children themselves, and he said, okay, what if we make an action film starring our own children? And you know they get they get attacked by kidnappers and they fight back because uh, there's a very real chance that a real kidnapper will try to take our children. Um, but in the movie, if they're tough and they beat them up, maybe the kidnappers will have second thoughts, you know. And, and the truth is, they're probably not going to be too smart to begin with, so it may work. Um, and that's and that's the genesis of the the crazy world, which is this crazy action comedy. It's freaking wonderful. But the heart of it, it's like it's real. Like you can't get more personal than that. You know, and, yeah. and that's the thing with the films in general is that they're very, very, they're very personal films. So which is there is a chance thing for action films? Will you know, there be a chance? Films, I think are, are best when they're just disposable. You know, like you have a great time and and they're cool. Will you have so, a chance to uh, see some of the some of the footage um, when you're oh, here in Schenectady? Yeah. Hell yeah! Are you kidding? I, look, man, <laughs> I come up with suitcases full of crap. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're definitely bringing some of that. You know, if, if, if you get me drunk, we go to a bar after I can show you more. Um, mm. But yeah, The Crazy World, Something Eaten Alive. Uh, there's another child film where I am a mad scientist and I create this killer robot, but the children in the village, they steal the remote control. And it turns out if the kids have the remote control, they can control all the adults around them. So they have to make the adults do silly things, you know, and fight each other and like, you know, not tear up the homework, all that kind of stuff. It's cute. That's, um, that's brilliant. <laughs> and so I mean, it's like this, there's a lot of this stuff. And so what we've been doing is kind of focusing on on the future. Meaning, you know, each film is, you know, it's a step up. It's a step up. Uh, and these are these are the ones that's coming. But also, there's this huge back catalog, and that's the next step too. It's like the next step, you know, is the crazy world and the cannibals. But the early stuff. Like the stuff around the same time as who killed Captain Alex back in 2009, 2010 is freaking mind blowing. And, you know, we chose to, to go forward being like it's built, you know, better equipment, better this, better that, instead of like focusing on the past set. But that stuff is coming next year, you know, and, and I'm, I'm telling you, people aren't going to be ready for this. And, and I, I'm not there to help anyone. Um, you know, I am now. <laughs> it's different now, you know. See? But I'm there because I think they're, I think he and the group, they're the real thing. And when, when you start to see it, like three or four of these films, that's what I always thought it was going to take. I thought it was going to take four or five of their films here right. before people realize, oh, this is, this is legit, meaning it's not, it's not something as easy as so bad it's good. Right. You know, right. that there's, this, there's, a, there's a great deal of thought in this. They're much there. It's, it's very, it, you can't dismiss it. Okay. Thank you so much, Alan. Yeah. This has been awesome. Yeah. Um, we can't That's wait to get you here. It's very, yeah. Yeah. We'll keep you. We'll keep you guys posted. And I'm sorry about the uh, the conditions. No, I even, no, I even no went to B and H today, and I got a microphone. For can this. can we <laughs> can we use some of the footage of of you talking about uh, the your father's uh, in the apartment? <laughs> Without a doubt. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. No problem. All right. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs>